coming up on this special summer edition of Daily Iowan TV, Pride on Parade. See how Iowa City celebrated 47 years of diversity and inclusiveness. And later, we'll find out how a car show goes the extra mile for the UI Families Children's Hospital. Clear skies and cooler temperatures. This week has it all. You'll find out more in weather. We've got all that and more coming up, so don't go anywhere. Daily Iowan TV starts now. Good afternoon and thanks for tuning in to Daily Iowan TV. I'm Christopher Cervantes. Our top story today is yet another attack out of London. Early Monday morning, London time, a van rammed into several Muslim worshippers outside a mosque. The incident left at least 11 people injured with nine being taken to hospitals for further treatment. London police arrested an unidentified suspect for both attempted murder and suspicion of terrorism. This incident has been met with a strong response from both the nation's prime minister and the London's mayor. With the prime minister describing it as as heinous as the previous vehicular incidents and the mayor firmly stating that, quote, terrorism is terrorism, end quote. On Friday, President Donald Trump announced his new restrictions on the USA's relationship with Cuba after five months of reviewing from, President, from former President Obama's Cuba deal. Excuse me, Trump called the deal unfair for America and only helping the Cuban regime. The new restrictions include banning individual educational trips to Cuba and prohibit funding to the Cuban military. However, Trump will keep a few things from Obama's past dealings, including keeping the U.S. Embassy in Havana and maintaining a diplomatic tie with the country. In response to the shooting of House Majority Whip Scalise and three others in Alexandria, Virginia, Iowa Congressman Steve King is blaming former President Barack Obama. He states that it was the divided political climate that ultimately contributed to the incident and that it was the climate itself was an effect of the Obama administration. This is the latest in a series of incidents where King has come under criticism starting back in March of this year when he claimed that the Muslim children of America were holding back society and then in April when he purposefully failed to meet a minority constituent. A local news, in the local news, excuse me, a ban on cardboard may be coming to Iowa City. Due to an excess amount of waste, the Iowa City Council is considering banning certain cardboard products within the city limits. Tomorrow, the City Council will vote on whether to ban corrugated cardboard. This type of cardboard is found in boxes such as moving boxes and pizza boxes. And the City Council hopes that this will divert approximately 13,000 tons of waste from the city landfill. While the topic will be discussed this coming Tuesday, the decision would not be implemented until early in the following year. This weekend saw the annual Iowa City Pride Festival, a celebration that welcomed all the Iowa City residents into its fray. I personally joined in the festivities to see just what it was all about. Saturday was the 47th annual Pride celebration, and by midday it was already in the swing of things, with students and families all coming together for mutual enjoyment and education. Having a day like this reminds me that Life does get better no matter where you are at and I hope that everyone can see this because this is great. Having a community that supports you as an individual is just one of the greatest things you could ask for. Despite all the fun this may be, it is more than just simple festivities. There is in fact a reason for Pride to exist in the modern day. What many people tend to forget is that Pride started out not as a party but as a form of protest that dates back all the way to the early 70s, all in the name of raising awareness about the inequality facing the LGBTQ plus community. Given the increase of LGBTQ plus rights, however, many wonder if events like this only serve to aggravate detractors and others outside the community. This was a claim that was heavily disagreed with. We still have a lot um, that we need to fight for. A lot of people are being killed, murdered, harassed. Um, pride is still relevant. Our, our political fights are still relevant. For the second year in a row, Iowa City's Pride Festival broke their records for attendance. For anyone who missed it, the Pride Festival is always a full day of family-friendly fun. And next year's event is already in the early planning stages. 
Well, the weather so far has been ne hasn't nearly been as wild as it was this spring, and I, for one, hope it stays that way. Let's head over to Ethan in the weather studio to see what is happening this week. Ethan, what do you got for us? That's right, Chris. We've had some great weather this summer, and it looks like that will continue for the majority of this week. Luckily, it begins to cool down from the high temperatures beginning Friday. Tonight will be partly cloudy with a low of 56. The clouds will be gone when you wake up tomorrow morning as it will be sunny. The high for the day tomorrow is expected to reach 87. Tuesday night will have clear skies with temperatures dipping down to the mid 50s. Now let's take a look at our five day extended forecast. Except for a few afternoon clouds, Wednesday will be mostly sunny with a high of 87 and a low of 70. However, there are thunderstorms expected after midnight. Thursday, we'll see a high of 90 and a low of 64 with scattered thunderstorms in the afternoon. Friday, we're expecting a high of 85 and a low of 61. Saturday, expect some rain over the course of the day with a temperature reaching a high of 79 and a low of 57. Sunday is expected to be mostly sunny and reach a high of 75 and a low of 56. That's your weather for the week. Chris, back to you. Thanks, Ethan. Amazon has picked Iowa City as its recipient for the Dream Big Award. Iowa City was chosen for its growing work with the Justice Initiative, and the company is awarding $25,000 of cloud services that are to be used to identify and track low-level offenders and get them any help they need to stay out of the system. This is part of a growing effort that is being conducted by not only the city government, but also Johnson County and Shelter House in a joint effort to reduce crime. With the summer season nearing its midpoint, many families are looking for fun activities to take part in. One organization that aims to fulfill this demand is the Iowa City Summer of the Arts program. And since 2005, the program has held annual events all throughout the summer with the goal of creating a family-friendly environment for all members of the community. Lisa Barnes, the program's executive director, explains that this is what sets them apart from others. We're not trying to be a Mission Creek Festival, you know, we're not mm -hmm. trying to be something else. There's a, a certain audience and niche for all of the different festivals in Iowa City, and we feel that our strength really is that family-friendly, family-focused events, and that's what we really try to plan as far as our scheduling for our festivals. Upcoming events include musical performances every Friday at the Weather Dance Fountain Stage, free movies on the Pentecrest, which are every Saturday outside of McBride, and the Iowa City Jazz Festival from June 30th to July 2nd. For more information, visit the summerofthearts.org. On Thursday, June 15th, Merge in downtown Iowa City officially opened for business. And this is not your normal hangout spot. They offer opportunity and resources for beginning businessmen and women, and they focus on startup companies as well as helping entrepreneurs merge offers, fiber optic internet, office space, and even tech support. Their goal is to help startup companies grow and create new opportunities. And the University of Iowa Athletic Club is being shut down after over 50 years of service. The official closure for the club is set for September 4th, 2018. This leaves students' position as well as the building in an unclear position, and the Iowa City Rotary Club debuted in 1960 and is a privately owned club. The club typically offers a wide range of activities and services from tennis courts to Hawkeye game parking and even a six-lane pool. The university bought the club a decade ago in 2008 for $6.5 million. Saturday the 10th annual Saturday, excuse me, the 10th annual Cruisin' for the Kids Classic Car Show came to Kinnick Stadium. The event was to get kids to appreciate the love of classic cars. There were lots of different events for the people of all ages, and it wasn't just for show though. All the proceeds are being donated to the new University of Iowa Children's Hospital. People were able to donate in many ways, ranging from fun games like bean toss to entering your own classic car into different competitions. The 2017 Telenet UCI Cyclocross World Cup in Iowa City has been postponed a day because of a conflict with a football game. After the Big Ten Network announced there will be a football game between Iowa and North Texas Saturday, September 16th at 2.30, due to this time, the Cyclocross World Cup has been moved to Sunday, September 17th at 2 p.m. at the Johnson County Fairgrounds. 
And speaking of sports, we have some exciting news in the world of baseball. After last week's Major League Baseball draft, four Hawkeyes will take their talents to the professional level. First baseman Jake A. Adams and shortstop Mason McCoy were selected in the sixth round with, pitcher, with pitchers Nick Gallagher and Ryan Erickson drafted later on. Other players from the state of Iowa who got drafted include pitcher Daniel Tillo from Sioux City North, Corey Howell from Kirkwood Community College, and Keenan Wynn from Iowa Western Community College. The excitement for Hawkeye baseball will continue on the global stage. University of Iowa has been chosen to represent the U.S. in baseball for the 2017 World University Games in Taiwan. More than 170 countries will compete in 22 sports, and this multi-sport competition takes place every other year, with the age group of participants ranging from 17 to 24. The Hawks opened the baseball tournament against Mexico on August 20th. Two Iowans will be contestants on this season of CBS's Big Brother. Cody Nixon, a construction sales representative, and Jason Dent, a rodeo clown, will spend the summer in the Big Brother house. The show's two-night premiere is set for June 28th and 29th, and I certainly will view in to watch it. That's all we have for you this week on Daily Iowan TV. Be sure to check out our website, dailyiowan.com, for all the latest news between now and next Monday. And don't forget to pick up a copy of The Daily Iowan every weekday, Monday through Thursday. For all of us here at Daily Iowan TV, I'm Christopher Cervantes. Have a great week, Iowa City. See you next time.